Well, Lord Hoganhow joins us now alongside Justin Finlayson, founder of United Borders, which is a youth charity that brings gangs together. Justin's son, Rico, was stabbed 10 times on one occasion, but survived. Um, good morning to you both. Good morning. Good to see morning. you both this, this morning. But, I mean, just horrific circumstances again. And Lord Bernard Hoganhow, you've spoken to teenagers. We've just been talking about stop and search. These are two teenagers who admit that they've been stopped and searched, but still carry weapons. So why do they carry them? And how do we stop them carrying? And how do we make sure that the other teenagers aren't dragged into the same thing? Well, it seems as though they worry more about being caught without a knife than with one, which is a sad indictment of all of us. Um, but certainly they were why worried. Did, why are they uh, worried Well, they're worried that they won't be able to protect themselves. Yeah. Now, I would say, and I think most adults would say, well, hang on, that's really silly, because the knife, if you're not quick enough, you're not strong enough, somebody will take the knife from you, mm. now you've got a knife in a fight. Mm. You're more likely to really... be stabbed if you're carrying a weapon. Yeah, I would say so, but that's not their perception. That's not their reality. And there's too many people in that position. Uh, you know, I think the point I'm trying to make, it seems to me there's two or three things that have changed. So, number one is that the supply of cocaine has, has got out of hand. Uh, and that market has, therefore, because the supply has gone up, the price has gone down, and the competition that ensues uh, has created the violence. There's clearly too many people carrying knives. Now, that says everything, and then you've got to decide what you're going to do about it. And thirdly, there's too many young men, generally, who don't care. And, you know, for whatever reason, they think that, you know, this is the right way forward with mm -hmm. drugs, uh, using a knife, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't see a way out of it. Right, so we've just, got to do something about that. Justin, we had a very yeah. uh, animated debate on air mm -hmm. last time about this. Yeah. It's carried on. Nothing seems to be changing at all. Okay. So whatever we're doing as a society to combat this is failing. In fact, you could argue it's getting worse. What, what is the answer, do you think? It's obviously multifaceted. Yeah. A lot of this is clearly gang drug related, but that's such a trite overview to take, I think. There are many yeah. more issues involved here. What are the answers? Well, yeah, um, a lot of... There's been a lot of underfunding. So we're talking about 44% of um, cuts to youth services um, since 2011. Um, the police have been, you know, quite open about the fact that for them to police has been difficult with the restraint of budget. So from my, in, my, in my practice, it's hard for me to deliver the services that I can when you're talking about there's no budget, there's no funding for someone like myself. And if you, if you had more people. money, yeah. do you think you would be <clears> successful <throat> in persuading a lot of kids who might otherwise gravitate to gangs and violence in the way we're seeing, do you think they would gravitate more to you and your oh, 100%, 100%. I mean, let's be, let's be clear. We, we're talking about some money, at least. There's no money coming down to grassroots initiatives, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the money that has come to my project, for example, has come via private companies. So the government, for me, isn't doing anything in terms of funding the, the companies that can actually be part of the solution. So, therefore, we will still have this conversation... And what is going until through... The money the, actually put comes me into the heads of these kids, right? What are they thinking? What, are the, what, it, what is it about <clears throat> carrying a knife that's empowering, yeah. about being a member of a gang that's empowering? No, it's, it's about post-traumatic stress disorder. When you see your friend stabbed in front of you, if you, if you yourself have been stabbed for no apparent reason, as my son was stabbed as well, if you don't get adequate support, you know, from family members and, and the rest of, to try and walk a, certain, um, walk, walk a certain path afterwards, then the likelihood is that you will carry to protect yourself. Mm. Lord Hoganhow, what about school exclusions? Because um, fingers have been pointed at uh, services not being there. A child is excluded for bad behaviour, possibly even carrying whatever. And then they're just hanging around outside, potentially intimidating other kids, but also just not getting any support themselves. Do you identify that as part of the problem? For me, it is. I think one thing we've got to work out is that, you know, you get some great disparities in exclusion rates. Yeah. And I think one thing that you know, the education side's got to look at is they measure the attainment of a school establishment or a college by their, their academic achievements. Of course, if you exclude the people who are least likely to succeed, mm. then, of course, your, your performance improves. Now, I'm not saying that happens everywhere, because that would be unfair, but I think these big disparities have got to be understood. Why are some schools excluding a few mm. and some a lot? So they're giving somebody else the problem. The second thing is, when they're excluded, they go to things called pu pupil referral units. Yeah. Now, it's not clear that all of these are working. In fact, actually, charities yeah. are achieving better results with less money. Mm. Now, it's not for me to judge the pupil referral units, but there's clear evidence that kids who've been excluded are more likely to become 
often victims actually, but also more, certainly more likely to become criminals. Mm. And that's a really important mm. moment when we've got to do things for kids, and particularly young men. It's not only young men, but it is young men who... We also have 20,000 police less on the streets than we Since had, 2010, thanks yep. to Theresa May. That seems a huge amount of me, of officers taken away from doing what could be good police work in this area. We have an explosion in cocaine coming into the country and being pushed out now from cities into the shires. And we have an explosion in knife crime. The three things seem to me to be completely interwoven. Never mind other issues which we've debated before about breakdown of families and so on. But these are three fundamental problems, aren't they? I think so. More drugs, yeah. more gangs, more violence, less police. Well, I think so. Um, it's clear that with 20,000 less, you can't do as much. And, you know, I did ask in the programme, uh, Nick Hurd, the police minister, well, how many more cops are we going to get for the extra money they're putting in? Now, to be fair, the government are putting more money now into policing. Mm -hmm. um, now, he said about 2,500 cops. That's too few. And the second question is, when are they going to be here? Mm -hmm. Now, even if you press the button today, and I would argue get the 20,000 back, you're not going to get them tomorrow. You've got to recruit them, you've got to train them, there's loads of things to do. So you've been looking for... It's a bit interesting that we're talking about more policing and yet still the results are proven that for the, for the um, public health approach in Scotland, it wasn't more policing that got the results. So I don't understand why so, is so it... So what again, did get the results there? Well, it was a public health approach. So it was multi-agencies working together to try and, you know, deal with Scotland at that time being one of the most violent places in, in Western Europe. Treating and, the violence as a disease. Yeah. And the vast majority, and we had this debate last time, yeah. Justin, mm. didn't we? The vast majority of the knife crime in Scotland at the time was being <coughs> perpetrated by young white youth. It was never referred to that way, though, was it? Right, but that's interesting, mm. and I think it was a very valid point for you to make, is mm. that in London, it is predominantly considered to be it's a colorized, black colorized. youth problem, yeah. mm. but in Scotland, where it was a white youth problem, it wasn't categorised by race. But this isn't just about London. We have to be clear that stop and search right now we, we, you know, the 43 precincts or police, police precincts that have done the, you know, done the information, they've shown that there's been like a 25% rise in Dorset mm. for stop and search for black people, 17% in Cornwall. These, these are not predominantly black areas, but yet still, we're still more stopped and searched than anyone else. So I wouldn't say the problem's badness. I think the problem's blackness. I think one is just quite interesting for what Justin just said about yeah. the public health approach. I think there's two things. I think it can work, yeah. but I think people are unclear what it means. Mm. It's just this label, public health. I think yes. people really want to understand, you know, what's, what's going to happen that's going to change. And if you look at Scotland as well, there were two things happened at the same time. The first was the public health approach. The other ones, they radically increased the amount of stop search. But everybody forgets that bit. Right. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, that stop search was done with consent. But it wasn't, as you said, about race. It no, was usually about deprivation. No, that's, but it's that's different. The link, I mean, if, if, if we're talking about the numbers in that respect, I'm more, nine times more likely to be stopped in search mm. than a white person. Mm. Now, I think that harms the police relations with the black community yeah. because at the end of the day, at least in Scotland, they know if they've been stopped and searched, well, they might be involved in something. Whereas if you're black, you don't have to be involved, you just have to be there. Well, I entirely agree. I, you know, you need to have fair stop search. I, yeah. You never get an argument from me about that. And I think two things that need to change. So one is we need better technology to spot mm. people who carry knives. I mean, we're just in the dark age at the moment. You've got, you're looking for good cops to use good intuition about who to stop. That's, what technology that's not is there to spot? Well, at the moment, all you've got is wands and archers. Now, we've had those for 20, 30 years. Well, people don't walk through the, no. the arches. You know, you've got to have something that the officer can carry yes. that will spot perhaps behavioural signs. I think you know, that's some, part of it. Behavior. I think we also have to look at the institutional racism within the police force. Um, I, 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 think I wouldn't that's argue about that. Yeah, I, well, I wouldn't argue about argument. that. I think, I think the numbers, the numbers substantiate what I'm well, talking about. You wouldn't argue about that? No, well, I'm not <laughs> arguing about that. About the potential no for people yeah. classifying groups yeah. because of, as you've said, just the past. So I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. But the second thing I would say is that if anybody... It, it's not a secret who carries knives. People know who carries knives. The only question yeah. is, will they tell the police? And there's not that trust there all the time to do it. But what we ought to be having is something... We've got Crime Stoppers. Yeah. I, I guarantee 14-year-olds haven't got a clue what Crime Stoppers are. Mm. But they need to understand what Crime Stoppers is, which is that they can anonymously give information about who's carrying a knife. The second thing is the cops have then got to have squads to say, right, go and find them now. Not in two weeks' time, mm. but now. And if you can get that, say, an app or a game or something where kids get something... And it may be a charity worker, it may be a head teacher. I don't care. Tell somebody where the knife is, then get the knife out of the situation so it improves stop-search. But should I entirely agree...